to another episode of the Get Go. Wild horses out in the garden are not going to keep me from working on this painting today. <laughs> Getting an early start. I watered everything deeply last night because we have a couple of upper 90 degree days, almost 100 degrees for the next couple days. So I'm getting an early start. Yay. I am going to work on the fabric down here because I'm tired of working on the <laughs> complicated parsley seed heads up there. Uh, but first I wanted to tell you that um, I'm going to share with you a segment from a Kickstarter promotional video that I did about seven years ago. It features an explanation of some of my figurative paintings. Um, for those who have not followed my career, uh, I am a figure painter as well as a still life and landscape painter. And over the years, I have created a number of works that were in a Hands of God series. Uh, I, I did the series to sort of uh, inspire people to think about the power they have in their hands and how they use their hands, um, how they express love through their hands, how they express compassion, um, and you know the power basically that they have in their hands to affect change in the world and affect the relationships in their lives. Um, and I discovered after looking at my art, that a lot of works that were not specifically in this series, and I'm going to put on the screen right now some that were specifically in this series, the Hands of God series, but there are others that I did previously or even after I started the series that were also um, very much along the lines of that Hands of God series. So. That's what this little video clip is from the Kickstarter video that I'm going to share with you. And also, in this description, in this uh, video, on the, there's several paintings of a mother and child that were done after setting up a beautiful still life in the window of this home and putting the baby and the mother there. I got all these beautiful photographs. And um, the Kickstarter video didn't succeed as I had hoped, except for uh, garnering me a portrait commission, which just happened to be the mother in these mother and child paintings, a series I did with the baby. She and her mother commissioned me to do a portrait of the baby who was now an adult and was getting married in New York City. Also, I am <clears throat> cleaning house and getting rid of some old prints. They're not old prints, they they were done a while ago, but they're beautiful prints that I had made with my printer. I'm no longer printing these on my printer. And several of these are uh, of these figurative works and I'm going to show you those. They are available for sale. Um, so there you go, I'm gonna get started now. You can't keep me any longer. <laughs> No distractions, I'm getting to work. <laughs> this painting's not gonna happen by itself. <laughs> this first painting is called Wisdom. This was done many, many years ago. Um, it's the first, basically, that I consider to be in this series, even though I didn't invent the series <laughs> until, you know, later. Uh, but I can see that now it's part of the series. And um, 
This has to do with uh, gifts that we are given from above, so to speak. It's this recognition of a higher force, you know, blessing us with bits of wisdom and, you know, um, healing and awareness. And I think we're given a lot of these pearls of wisdom, but they sort of bounce off of us because we're not paying attention or we're purposely ignoring them or we don't understand or we're just being oblivious. Um, and I feel like this painting represents, you know, a pearl of wisdom. There's a pearl in her fingertips, the angel's fingertips. This is a pearl of wisdom that I'm recognizing and that I'm taking and it's a personal painting. One of my first major personal paintings. Um, the next painting is called uh, A New Day for Humanity. And this painting is about sharing the resources of the world. Um, in this painting, the mother represents the developed nations of the world. And she's sharing her bounty, this food, these oranges and things on the table, with her child, uh, her member of her family. Who represents the undeveloped nations of the world and the light pouring in through the curtains basically represents a symbolic of the light pouring into the world right now because I believe we're we're coming into a time of a spiritual awakening and uh, that's what that light represents in this painting this uh, painting call is called three's company and it's the the recognition that our children are not ours to possess, but they are children of the world. And um, the person in the background that's, you know, the baby is reaching for sort of symbolizes the outer world and the fact that the baby will be growing and moving on to live their lives. And it's a sort of recognition of the one life, this one family. And I've done some other paintings in this series. This, this painting is called specifically The One Life. And this is the same mother and child. I set this woman up with her baby. And you can see uh, in this picture the, the, the baby and the mother who I photographed. I set them up next to the window. There was a table. I set up this still life next to the window and I there was all this light pouring in the window and I got the most beautiful photographs and I did a whole mess of paintings from this mother and child. Uh, this is another one. This is called Second Womb. This is still the same mother and child and this one represents the changing matrixes in a new soul's life. Like the baby starts out with the first matrix being the mother's womb and the, the second matrix would be the outside of the mother. She's sitting on the lap of the mother in a safe place and then she reaches out for the the next matrix which is the outer world and this sort of represents that third matrix and the mother's helping the baby reach out to that world. Um, and then I did this painting which is just called Sherry and Tessa. These are the the models that I used. Um, and um, I think I might have even done a couple more, <laughs> which I don't have pictures of right now. This painting is called Limelight. It, it's about the fact that when a baby is born, the mother's personal life sort of fades to the background. Um, she's sort of in the shadow in a way, and the baby is in the limelight. There's all this light on the baby, and the mother just is sort of working behind the scenes in a way, even though she's very important. She's still putting things aside to take care of this child. And it's a huge thing in a, a woman's life or a parent's life to sacrifice. It's like the biggest sacrifice there is on the planet, as far as I'm concerned. So I just wanted to depict that. And this painting is called Beholden. Um, and uh, this goes back to the, the idea of what I want people to think about. And this painting has to do with the responsibility we have to our siblings or family members. These these are two sisters and um, I just wanted people to think about the you know the responsibility that an older sibling has for a younger sibling um, and how their relationship changes and grows and 
as over the years and um, and I also have another painting like that this one's called sweet fun this one is also an older sister and a younger sister and it just depicts the the wonderful camaraderie and the playfulness of their relationship and I am on bike duty today so got this problem this bike rack is super heavy and I can't leave it on the car all the time even though it flips up against the back because I am driving a Toyota RAV and look I can't open the door all the way <laughs> the other thing is I had to use an extension um, this little piece right here is an extension to the hitch and so it really it just makes the bike too far out and wobbles and really freaks me out when I'm driving on the highway now my bike is electric bike this is a Copenhagen wheel and the wheel itself is 17 pounds and it's not a light bike because I wanted, you know, kind of a cruiser just for errands around town because I'm not a speedster or anything <laughs> or a mountain biker. But the whole bike, my whole bike is 55 pounds and it's damn heavy. Oh. What, what I'm doing today is I got another bike rack right there, which fits on the spare tire. And... It's just like a bar that comes up and then comes out. And I think it comes out pretty high. That's where you put the bike on. So I'm a little worried that this bar that I have to put the bike on is so high that I won't be able to lift the bike up to it. And the yeah, this is one day when you wish you had a guy around to do this kind of stuff. I don't do cars. You see, I do a lot of stuff. I even installed a water heater soldering gas pipes in a little tiny closet, which I will never do again, by the way. <laughs> but I just don't do cars. I just don't like messing with maintenance on cars. So, but you know, you do what you got to do and I'm doing it for my bike, <laughs> not a car. <laughs> so here we go. Okay, I've had this car for 15 years and I have never once <laughs> put air in this tire <laughs> or even looked at it. Um, and it, I've been sitting here trying to pump it up and it's still not even registering on this tool. <laughs> so, I'm sure somebody out there is going to be really laughing at me because it would probably take me an hour to fill this up with this little pump but I don't know what else to do. So I can't install the bike rack unless this is fully inflated. So yippee.
Okay, I'm moving slowly today because it's Sunday and I ruined myself uh, weeding yesterday. <sighs> the bindweed is going to be the end of me. Anyway, I have this uh, space and it's just a hotbed of mess and heat from the summer, but I have all these um, fence panels and I am planning to lay them down on the ground just uh, very temporarily at the moment because I don't have time to do a good job. But I realize that this area back here can be my workshop um, because I'm going to be working on my shed. I don't want to work in the shed. And I can't work under the porch because I have all the stuff stacked there from the shed. And I can't work under the carport because I have my little bats are back and I don't want to be running the saw <laughs> right underneath them <laughs> while they're trying to sleep during the day. <laughs> so uh, also my neighbor has a, a big metal, I think like eight foot by eight foot uh, metal canopy thing which she's just gonna give me, which would be great if I could get up enough of these panels to walk on and put that canopy over, then I at least have a sort of temporary workspace. My strawberries, I'm excited because I actually had some strawberries on my oatmeal this morning. It was so incredible. I managed to get a couple before the birds. <laughs> my um, little trellis is doing really well. It's so cute to see the solar lights come on at night. So here is my comfrey that I just picked. I'm going to chop that up and lay it in all of my strawberry pots. And here's one of my strawberry uh, pots. And I'm, I laid a whole bunch of this, uh, you know, dried sort of composty stuff from behind the shed. And then I'm laying some comfrey leaves for nutritional value. And then I'm just gonna put some dried grass on top because the pots are just drying out way too fast. Mm -hmm. 